Hi, welcome back to my channel and for today's video, we will be talking about the left and right cosets. Before I'll start with my video for today, I'm proud to have here my Aglonima Seyam here. And um, thank you guys for all your support. And if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. So let's start now. <clears throat> um, provided that you have watched all the videos in the Abstract Algebra ser series prior to this video. So we have the definition here. Um, the set HA is called a right coset of h so this one here is a right coset of h and the set a h here is called the left coset of h in g so identification is that when a is on the right then this is a right coset of h when a is on the left of h then this is a left coset of h that's it let's consider for example um you have your g here as the z eight so technically this one contains this okay and assuming for example that your h here is the set containing zero and four so this is a subgroup of g the left coset so let's consider the left cosets here um of course h here is automatically the left coset the h simply because i can write h as zero plus h i also have uh one plus h and i also have two plus h i will also have three plus h here so meaning to say that um this one plus h is equal to the set of one plus h such that h is in h so basically this is um one Five. This 2 plus h is also 2, 6. This 3 plus h is 3, 7. So the reason we don't have 4 plus h here and so on is because you would get um, z, uh, 4 plus h, 4 h in h. And in fact, this is 4. And if we add 4 and 4, we get 0, which is technically the same as the h. So there are only four unique left cosets of H. That's it. So if you are, if you notice here that um, one plus H is sim is just the same as H plus one. This is the same as H plus two. This is the same as H plus three. However, let's take note in general that the right coset is not necessarily always be the left cosets. Um, especially if we are dealing with multiplications of matrices so that means matrices are elements of a given um, group so there is no commutativity in matrices that's it so we will consider a theorem here that could be a part of the discussion for the left and right cosets. so we have a theorem here considering that you have a subgroup h in g number one g is the union of the right and left cosets of h in g number two the right respectively the left cosets of h in g are either disjoint or equal number three for every a b in g this h a equals h b implies that a b inverse is in h and a inverse b is in h and if you have um, a set of right distinct cosets of h in g and this is also the left cosets of h in g then the order are equal okay and recall on the previous video that um this is an equivalence relation on a then then um the union of equivalence classes of a uh, where a is an element of a is equal to a and this is equal to the union of equivalence classes of a where a bar is an element of a with respect to r also a bar is equal to b bar if and only if a 
is related to B. And number three, for every A, B in A, either A bar intersection B bar is empty or a bar is equal to b bar so meaning to say this that these uh, statements here have actually proven the claim one two and three in fact this one states that um so to show number four we will establish a mapping here uh from r to l defined by sending h a to a inverse h so this is the right coset and this is the left coset now our goal here is actually to show that these are here the number of distinct right cosets of r is equal to the number of distinct left cosets in r so meaning to say that in order for us to show this we will have to show that this mapping is bijection okay so if we have taken elements here um observe that if we have h a equals h b then by our uh, claim number three of the theorem we have proven earlier this is a b inverse in h if and only if um, in fact i can write this as this one in h so meaning to say i can write this in this way and uh, observe that a inverse and b inverse are also elements of g meaning to say that um this is equal to phi of h a equals phi of h b so therefore this of uh, mapping here this mapping phi is well defined so in fact this is a function and also if you notice this is if and only if implication here because starting from here we can go up here and starting from here we can go up there and this is go up here and then go back to that so implying that our fee is also one to one so if you have questions or clarification you can comment down there so that i would know and lastly to show that this mapping is on two we will um, assume an element in um, the do uh, codomain. So let's let a h be in script l. Then a inverse is an element of g, so that h a inverse is in R with um, phi of h a inverse. This is actually a inverse inverse h which is equal to a h so this means to say that our phi is on two so since we've shown that phi is well defined one to one and on two we can now jump into conclusion that phi is by check phi and so therefore the number of the distinct left cosets is the same as the number of distinct right cosets that's it so let's consider one more example um on the explanation about left and right cosets so let g be a multiplicative group uh, of matrices so in this case our g here is the set of matrices of the form a b zero one where your a and b are in r and um your a is not zero and um consider h to be the set of matrix of the form 1c 0 1 where your c is any real number and this is a subgroup of g in fact you can verify that this h is a subgroup of g so you can check that on the subgroup criterion i have explained on the previous video so for a fixed element of of g Let's consider left coset. So our left coset, we have A, B, 0, 1, H. So let's double check. Um, in fact, this is an element of G, so that will be possible to be a left coset. So I would have A, 0, B, 1. And um, I have uh, 1, C, 0, 1. 
where your C is in R. And then um, if you simplify this uh, set here, you can have A, B plus C, and you will have 0, 1, such that C is in R. Well, you can let this anyway as A, you can let this one here to be, let's say, X, 0, 1, and in this case, your X is in R. With that, which tells us that the left cosets consist of all matrices in G having what the same upper left entry. That's all. So that's all for now. So thank you so much for watching. So if you have any questions or clarification, kindly let me know by commenting down on the comment section. So thank you guys for listening and have a great day to you.